In today's video, we're taking a look at who I feel are top 10 candidates to be a major breakthrough player in the NHL for the 22-23 season. We'll take a look at that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we're looking at some candidates that I feel are real strong possibilities to be what we call a breakthrough player for the 22-23 NHL season. So in case you're not really sure what that means, a breakthrough player is somebody who I feel is going to take a major leap, major step forward in their production and their play this year and will really be kind of like I'm almost like a most improved so to speak a lot of times these are younger players that are really uh, you know maturing and taking their game to a new level and sometimes you see a player even though they might have been around a little bit longer a little bit more experience sometimes you see them really kind of explode even at a little bit of a later age but traditionally speaking you're looking at players been around anywhere from you know one to three to four years and are looks like a prime candidate to really move their game in the right direction now these are not in any particular order uh, these are just players i feel that are going to do significantly better this year than they did last year and really position themselves to be a more dominant nhl hockey player now first up we're going to talk about tim stutzla the ottawa senators stutzla of course just signed a mega eight-year extension with the ottawa senators is proud to be a big part of that uh, newly uh, revamped top six in ottawa likely getting a combination of either playing with kachuk and matherson or Giroux and Debrinket. Uh, there's been some shuffling of him and Josh Norris, the centers between both lines. So regardless of which line he plays on, he's playing with some real top-notch players that are very capable of scoring lots of goals. So I do think that obviously he's in a real good spot that way, playing with real good players. We know that he's come into camp as in tremendous shape, uh, except he's taken another year. He's another year older, another year more mature. And I think Tim Slusa is a prime candidate to really elevate his game. We saw a good pr progress last year over his rookie season, and it's going to be another case where we just really see him ramp it up again this year. I don't think we're going to see Stutzla go to like a 100-point player or anything of that nature. Longer term, I think he can get there, but I think we're going to see a bigger jump in points production this year than we have last year that he might see any, any other year in his career. I can see him being up somewhere in that 70-80 to 80 point range if things go the way I expect them to this season. Another great candidate for a breakthrough player is Andre Kuzmenko. Obviously, Kuzmenko came over and signed with the Vancouver Canucks after playing uh, in the KHL. Now, of course, Kuzmenko appears like he could be a real solid goal-scoring type of winger for Vancouver. Uh, obviously, at his age, being a little bit older, uh, you know, uh, he, he's a player who's mature. He's a player who's ready and appears to be a good help for a guy like Elias Pettersson, for example. So I would not be one bit surprised to see Kuzmenko really break through in his first NHL season, put up at least 20, 25, maybe more goals, and really cement himself as a real solid top six forward in Vancouver. Uh, next up, we have former first overall pick Alexi Lafreniere of the New York Rangers. I think for the Rangers to really be a serious cup contender this year, and I think they can be, we're bound to see some guys like Lafreniere and Kako at this stage of their development to really take a step forward and really move the needle here for what they can be relied upon and what they can put up for production. Lafreniere so far, his he's, he's showing development, he's showing improvements, but we haven't really seen uh, you know, a real high quality season from the former first overall pick. Being that first overall pick does come with a lot of pressure. We've seen lots of other players in the past, you know, start slow and then by year three or four really explode and become that superstar that a lot of people thought they were going to be when they were first drafted. And I'm not sure Lafreniere is going to go all the way to that point, but I do think we're going to see some big growth in his game this year. I think we'll see more goals, more assists, more points, and he really take things up. A big notch in New York. Next up, I want to look at Alex Newhook of the Colorado Avalanche. With the departure of Nazem Kadri, Newhook's primed to be a number two center. A big step up and improvement for where he's in a slot in the Avalanche lineup. Now, of course, Alex Newhook put up 33 points before. Uh, it's a career high for him. So there's lots of opportunity to grow. They have a real solid top six group of players in Colorado. Of course, the Stanley Cup champions uh, are primed to be contenders again this year. And Newhook could be a much bigger part of that than he was this time last year. Alex Newhook, I think, has a real solid potential to solidify himself as a number two center and really look at putting up his point totals, maybe even double or better. I mean, of course, we'll see how things go if Newhook 
can't handle this role or he's not succeeding to the point that they would like him to, then I would suspect this will be an area of weakness that the Avalanche may look to address at the NHL trade deadline. But Newhook's got a tremendous opportunity. He's very talented, and I can see things working out that he really breaks through this year. Next up, we got Matthew Boldy in Minnesota. The Wild are another team expected to do good things this year. Boldy so far has 39 points in 47 games. Uh, he really exploded onto the scene last year, but I think he can now take that and do it over a full campaign and really elevate things and kind of get a bigger name for himself. I think Boldy uh, is a player that it's just he's only scratching the surface here so far. Now, of course, he did work a lot with Kevin Fiala last year, and of course, Fiala's not there in Minnesota any longer. So we'll see if that has any kind of impact on. Boldy's game, but I fully suspect this year in Minnesota, given what he showed last year, he's going to be able to do uh, get more of an opportunity uh, with the departure of Fiala and get more of an opportunity with the coaching staff to play a bigger role and should be able to capitalize on this and become you know close to a point per game player. That would not be shocking in the least for this young budding superstar. Next up, we've got Marty Natchez of the Carolina Hurricanes, and he's a player they absolutely need him to take a big step forward. Last year, they were hoping this would happen, and it really didn't, and I think that's a big part of why the team didn't do better. I'm not going to put that all on Natchez, but certainly if Marty Natchez was a step along in his development, that certainly would have made things better. But again, with the departure of Vincent Trocek, they really need Natchez to step up and step forward and really make some good uh, you know, changes this year to be a stronger player. So far in the preseason and limited NHL action in the regular season, so far so good. It looks like Natchez is up to that challenge and is certainly going to be ready. But, I mean, he's been a player that for Carolina for the past couple of years, that he's a good player, but it's fair to say that he always leaves them wanting just a little bit more and that they know that there's more in there. They just seem to bring it out in him and really exploit those skills. So Marty Natchez, to me, should be a – key contributor to the Carolina success this year and really improve his overall point production. Uh, next up, we've got Cole Caulfield of the Montreal Canadiens, or should we call him Gold Caulfield? The guy can score flat out. Obviously went on a bit of a tear after the coaching change last year in Montreal. Really, really, really performed well under Marty St. Louis, whereas under Dominic Ducharme, it was an absolute disaster. There's no lying, no sugarcoating that. But Caulfield's taken off, and he's only... Played one game so far as I've recorded this video, but he had two really good snipes against the Maple Leafs and goaltender Matt Murray. And I think he's on track here to have himself a real solid year. If you date back to how last year ended, he's already started off strong again. Uh, you know, even though the Hams don't look to be an overly deep, strong team, he has great chemistry with Nick Suzuki. He's got a wicked shot, wicked release. And even though, like, you know, they're still going to have some players have a lot of individual success, and he's going to be one of them. Wouldn't be shocking at all if Caulfield's at least a minimum of 30 goal scorer this season for Montreal, maybe even more. Next up, we've got Oliver Wallstrom with the New York Islanders. They really need him to break through as well, and I do think he has the potential to do that. And a lot of that's going to depend, though, on opportunities given from the coaching staff. Of course, we've changed from Barry Trotz to Lane Lambert, but of course, Lambert was a longtime Trotz assistant, so I do wonder how much of a difference we're going to see, if any at all, in style. Uh, but Wallstrom's a player that it's a make or break season for him. I'd rather see him break through than get to that point where at the end of the year that people might start labeling him a bust if they haven't already. Wallstrom was drafted with a ton of offensive capabilities, a wicked shot, and was viewed upon as being a winger of the future, especially somebody who could connect with Matthew Barzell. And that's really not something we've seen, at least not successfully, uh, for much of it all. So to me, they need to give him an opportunity to play with the right players. And he could be that missing scoring winger that they desperately need. Next up, we get Cole Sillinger of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sillinger, to me, is a player uh, who, by the end of the years, could very well be their top center. Uh, right now, Boone Jenner was playing between Liney and Gaudreau to start the year. I don't think that he's going to finish the year in that spot. Of course, Liney is out for about a month now as well. So that's not going to help matters. But Cole Sillinger will, might be able to get even bigger opportunities, along with Kent Johnson. Um, with Line a being out. I mean, to me, without Line a in there, and you change the lineup here a little bit, and it's, it's, it's skeptical on what they're going to be able to accomplish. But I do think getting more opportunity for Sillinger is never a bad idea. He can certainly handle it. And like I said, I wouldn't be shocked by the end of the year. He plays himself right into that top center spot between Gaudreau and Line a once he's back. And he won't look back, and he'll start putting up a ton of points and really break through for the Jackets. 
And lastly here, we'll look at Ellie Tolvanen of the Nashville Predators. They've been waiting for this for a few years as well. The former first-round pick in 2017 came to the NHL with a lot of fanfare, a lot of accolades, had a heck of a year uh, that season, of course, between uh, World Juniors and Olympics. Uh, it really played a ton of hockey, signed at the end of the season, and just never really worked out. The last couple of years have been a major disappointment for him. Uh, I think it's fair to say that they just discovered that he wasn't quite ready and he needed time to develop. They've given that to him. Last year, he put up 23 points in 75 games in Nashville, played a full and complete pretty well NHL season. That's a good start. Now it's time to take things up yet another notch here and really adjust to really double their point totals. I think we could see Tolvan be a 50 to 60 point player by the season's end, given the fact that he's much more acclimated to the North American game. He's had a few years to get used to this. Uh, the, the Predators overall as a team, I think, are pretty good. Had a lot of good offensive players to work with. And he should be able to succeed and thrive into a bigger role with more production here for Nashville. So those are my top 10 breakthrough players for the NHL's 22-23 NHL season. There's lots of other candidates that we can look at as well. So if there's another player you feel will also be in that category, let me know down in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.